Hi, I'm John Doherty, and today we're going to start a new series called Faults and Fixes. And it's going to be based off the P1 to P10 videos, or the swinging model, or the online model that we talked about. And we're going to select certain parts of the body and just really kind of break them down and uh, see if that could help you with your swing. Um, I like my students when I'm working with them to get organized, and how they do it is they, get, they start with the feet, they work up the knees, the hips, shoulders, the arms, the grip where their hands are in relationship to the ball, and if you can get in that habit of checking those things, eventually uh, that list gets shorter and it becomes secondary and uh, you'll do it naturally. But uh, to start out, you got to get uh, know the different segments, what you're looking for, and get organized with your golf swing. So today, just like that, we're going to start with the feet, the knees, and the hips. They all kind of tie together and it's a huge part of the golf swing. So in the back swing, um, what I see, and just talking about problems uh, with the knees and the hips, is I don't see enough hip turn. And um, a lot of that has to do with the knees and the feet. So if you look at the feet, you want to have the feet flared a little bit like a duck. Not crazy, because if you go this way or you go this way, it inhibits the turn. So a nice little 15 degree flare with both feet is what we're looking for. And a flare, having the foot out, helps rotation in that direction. So having your foot pigeon-toed in would actually be um, a radius lock or rotation lock. It would inhibit the rotation in those joints. So I'm looking for a little of the feet to be flared out. Um, at setup, you want a 50-50 uh, posture, meaning if I did uh, the center of my feet be in the center of my balance, I want to have my butt back behind my heels and my upper body down. I also what I'm looking for is that right knee to be flexed to where it's over the toes of my shoe. Now, I like to see the stance closed, and the reason why is that's where I want to start the ball. So I want the ball starting down my stance line. Even though, if you go back and watch the P series, I like the shoulders open because the shoulders are going to be open at impact some 45 degrees. So I like to start with the shoulders open. But we're talking about the knees, feet, and hips. So right knee flex more than left knee. And what I'm looking for in the backswing is for you on these down the line shots to see the full front part of your pants even by P3. So as you're taking this club back, I want to see the full front part of your pants. And this is something that happens real interesting um, with the spine. So at address, your spine is flexed forward over your belt buckle. But when your hips turn and your right knee straightens and your left knee swings over, and you can let the left heel come up, swings over to the right leg, you lose that forward flexion and it turns in to side bend. So really what you have to do with the upper body is just keep it down. The hips, that's how important they are. Is I see too many videos and swings of people that actually start the swing with the right knee going in, but then they lock it. And that, and that right knee quits moving inward. You don't want it hyper extended, but it's pretty close. It's straightening, but there's still a little flex there, but it's going from flexed over the toes to some seven or eight inches back from where it started. So and that's even by P3, P4, you want to have the full front part of your pants shown with the knees. Now what this also does as far as the ground forces is when that right glute goes back behind that right heel, that loads the pressure in the right heel of the foot. And that's so critical because that pressure is used to push you back over your left foot. And those left foot ground forces, and we'll talk about it in a second, are critical for speed. So anyways, getting back to the feet, knees, and hips. The big thing I want you to work on if you're just standing there is just freely turning your hips, feeling like maximum rotation, and then let your left knee swing over to your right leg this way. It is not a hip slide this way. It is a rotation going back. And if you watch from this view, you can see that my right leg is still angled in. I didn't drift my hip out this way. I've rotated my, you can, my right kneecap is rotating around this way. My hip is rotating around. My right leg is straightening, but not hyperextended. My left knee is swinging over. And when you do this from down the line, you should see a decent size gap between the legs, especially once you get into your golf posture this way. You should see a huge gap of space when that right knee straightens and that left knee flexes and that pressure goes into that right heel. All right, so talking about the downswing, about P3.5, not at P4. If you, if you start moving left at P4, it's too late. So by P3.5, is everything starting to go back? You got your torso down, your hips are rotating, right knee straightening, left knee swinging over. Your side bend is now on the left side because of what your hips did, not because 
all of a sudden I started kicking in side bend to get that side bend. So I'm staying forward flexed, my hips are rotating, right knee straightening, and it's replacing this forward flexion now when my torso stays inclined to a side bend in my left side. Also with the hands and arms going in, um, there's really no uh, conscious thought to turn the torso at all. All that's done by the hips and the hand path. Your main goal with the torso is keep it down and let this engine of the hips really take you there in the backswing. So once you're loaded up and things are looking good at P3.5 and you've got this beautiful full hip turn like Sam Sneed, Hogan, Mac O'Grady, um, it's not hard. This is actually making the backswing so much easier than trying to restrict the hips or lock the knee. It's let this just free up the space. Once you get here, you got pressure in your right heel. If you've done the motion right in the backswing with the upper body and it stayed put, you should have the belt buckle further from the golf ball than the tag of your shirt. All right, that puts the center of mass actually left. Even though all the pressure is in my right heel, it forms like a leaning tower of Pisa. So it actually is encouraging that my, my center of mass starts moving back over my left foot. But even though there's that, that balance that wants to go left, you're going to use the pressure in your right heel as you're going back to push into that left knee. So by P5, after P4, P, you're already starting to go left, so you're pushing off left. By P5, you should have a ton of force pushing in the ground with your left foot. That means that left knee is flexed. That right knee is, is still straight. There's no attempt to rotate the hip. So what I see so many problems in the top of the backswing are usually caused by people doing bad things in the backswing. So you can see this is a very common backswing problem. My center of my hips is moving towards my target and my upper body is going back. Well, I got pressure in my left foot, even though the center of my mass is right. So this is a true reverse pivot. So it, a reverse pivot meaning my center of mass is back, my pressure is right. Well, in the downswing, I'm going to press back with my left foot and then by impact, I'll have all my pressure and my center of mass on my right foot. So that's not good. So what we're looking for is getting the, hips, the hip center to move back and right into my right heel while the tag of my shirt is staying on the golf ball. I'm not going to twist my upper body. This is this is going to cause when you I call it just twisting, but when people twist or spin with the torso, the up the center hip moves forward. So we're, the focus does not need to be on the upper body. It needs to be here on the hips as far as anything in rotation in the backswing and the knees. So we're moving straight in the right knee, belt buckles moving back, tag of the shirts forward, and then we're going to use that pressure in that right heel by P5 to go ahead and get into that lead foot. Now a big problem I see here in the downswing is people are turning their hips too much. So once they make this beautiful motion, they, they go right into hip rotation this way. Well that, when you turn your hips like this, that pushes the belt buckle forward too early and then kicks in a side bend too soon to the right. So now you're going to fight getting under plane. And a lot of people do this, this tilt business to the right, because their backswing so lifted and steep at the top. So go back in those videos, especially P4, P3, P4, and make sure that you're getting those hands deeper than your right shoulder at the top so that you're not having to tilt and fall back to shallow the golf club coming down. So really, there's no hip rotation from P4 to P5 in the sense that you think of hip rotation like spinning the hips. Basically, we're fully turned. We're using the pressure to get over the left foot. The ground forces in the left foot are going to be used to push off the left knee, which is going to straighten it by P6. That pushing off is going to also raise my left shoulder up and allow me to have a good impact. Now, if you look, when I use those ground forces and straighten my left knee, my left shoulder went up, which opened my shoulders 45 degrees. So I got a lot of students that are impacting the golf ball with them square with the shoulders at impact and their right arm straight. And that's because they never got that proper pressure in that lead foot. They never got their center of mass and pressure over that lead foot. Now, the interesting thing that happens is now I got my center of mass and my pressure over my lead foot. Well, when you start pushing off with that, that force that you've, that you've established at P5, and now you're starting to use that force to push against it and straightening that knee, as the tag of your shirt, which was on the ball, starts working back behind the ball, and your belt buckle will start moving forward. And this is taking that center of mass and moving it back. So in the, in the backswing, we talked about having the um, center of mass actually this way, but the pressure is in my right heel. Well, in the follow-through, 
there's a brief moment of time in that transition when you got the center of mass and pressure over the lead foot. But once you start blasting off the ground, that left knee starts to straighten, that left shoulder starts to going up, and that belt buckle starts going towards the target. Now the pressure is in my lead foot, but my center of mass is back. So at the finish, this left knee should be straight, the right knee should be flexed, both thighs should be touched, and that's for balance. You don't want a big, big gap between your knees. In the finish, you're gonna have a hard time staying up. So in the finish, left knee straight, right knee flexed, thighs touched together. And basically what's keeping you up is the tippy toe of your right shoe. Because my center of mass is back, um, I, I wanna fall back right here. And that's why all the pros finish by lowering their arms, coming back to their right foot and watching the golf shot. So just to kind of recap what we talked about, you can't do this enough. You can't turn the hips enough. Straighten the right knee, get these loose. And a good drill is just to practice just turning the hips both ways, just getting this, these joints loose and ready to go. This is the engine in the backswing is the hips. And then the engine in the downswing is getting the center mass over that lead foot and be able to use the ground to push off. All right, well, this is a first of a series where we're kind of address different segments of the body called faults and fixes. And I sure did enjoy it. Hope to see you back soon. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.